We're back with another episode of Scorekeeping. Today, I am so pumped to be talking about the latest viral trend. That's right, you know the one. The one with the guy drinking that particular brand of cranberry juice while skateboarding down the highway. Oh yeah. Today, I'll be breaking down that old Gen Zen song in the background, Dreams by Fleetwood. What? What do you mean that trend is dead? Do you have any idea how long it takes to write one of these scripts? <sighs> okay, so what is trendy now? You gotta be kidding me. Uh, okay, okay, give me a minute. with another episode of Scorekeeping, where today I will be breaking down the guaranteed latest viral trend, which is sea shanties. What makes them so infectious, so viral? <laughs> and most importantly, how can I get my sea shanty fix from opera? Why am I even talking about sea shanties today instead of, you know, any other kind of music? Well, we have Nathan Evans to thank for that. Mr. Evans, a postman from Scotland, lit the fire that has grown to be known as Shanty Talk with his rendition of The Wellerman. This sea shanty, dated around the mid-19th century, originates from New Zealand, which shows that sea shanties can come from honestly just about anywhere. They just need to have a few things in common in order to qualify for hashtag shanty talk. Number one, a sea shanty is a rhythmic work song. In fact, the term shanty is thought to be derived from the word chant or chanter, which in many languages means to sing or the singer. While a sea shanty is a work song, there are tons of other kinds of work songs from all of human history. Perhaps most famously, the black spirituals developed in the American South during slavery. The trade of these sea chanters leads us to the fairly obvious number two. Sea shanties are specifically created by sailors for those long trips at sea aboard merchant sailing vessels. Shanty songs served the important purpose of synchronizing labor aboard the ships and setting the pace for workers. It's like listening to music while you're running on a treadmill. The faster the music is, likely the faster you're going to be running. Now, think of it on a grand scale, where an entire crew on a ship needs to work together in time to optimize the workload. This technique could technically be applied to any industry, but sailors are at the mercy of the rhythm of the sea, making the alignment of technical work that much more important. Which brings us to number three. A sea shanty is a huge boredom buster, as many of us know by now. As a matter of fact, there's a shanty for almost every kind of task a sailor may perform on the ship. Uh, there's a long drag shanty, a short drag shanty, a sweating up shanty, a hand over hand shanty, a bunch shanty, a stamp and go shanty, a capstan shanty, a windlass shanty, a, a pump shanty, and a handy dandy shanty. I made up the last one, but the other ones are totally legit. Whether you're performing back-breaking, repetitive tasks aboard a lonely ship at sea, or you're mindlessly scrolling through TikTok to while away the quarantine hours, sea shanties are a great way of taking your mind off of the moment and adding a little fun to your day. As I mentioned earlier, black spirituals are perhaps the most famous body of work song literature. But did you know that sea shanties probably would not exist without the contribution of African slaves? It's actually thought that Europeans and European Americans rarely utilized work songs in their industries. This tradition originates in Africa, and European sailors developed their shanties through imitation. This is evident in shared styles and even shared lyrics between black work songs, minstrel music, and shanties. For example, the phrase, girl with the blue dress on, is used in a black mule driver song, in a popular minstrel song, and in this sea shanty called Johnny Come Down to Hilo. Oh, 
waker, hey! oh shaker, hey! oh wake that girl with a blue dress on when Johnny comes down to hide oh poor old man. While the history of these work songs is fascinating, it doesn't answer the question why shanties are still so popular and so fun to sing. From high school boys Way, hey, up she rises. to South Aussies to Scottish postmen. Blow my belly boys blow. Everyone loves a good shanty, and who doesn't love a good call and response as most sea shanties are? While a solo sea shanty certainly has its charms, nothing quite compares to that feeling of togetherness and harmony when your chanter starts the call and your crew responds in full. Sometimes the responses are exact imitations of the call, creating an enhanced echo effect. Other times, the response completes a phrase or thought started by the call. For example, shave and a haircut. You know the rest. And even other forms of call and response involve a repeated chorus line where, no matter what the call is, the response remains the same. In the famous tune, Holloway Joe, a shanty originating somewhere between the War of 1812 and the Civil War, after every line, the chorus responds with Away, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. If you look closely above the word Joe, you see a carrot symbol indicating that on this word, the entire crew should pull together. It's important to recognize that the melodies of sea shanties aren't often complex. They function within a very standard chordal pattern, typically one, four, five, one. If that doesn't mean much to you, that's okay. Think of it like a modern pop song that you might hear on the radio. They don't often change keys or modally shift during the song, and the supporting instruments, like guitar, are usually working within three to four chords. While sea shanties may not have been harmonically or melodically complex, this perfectly fits the bill for a bunch of uneducated sailors who don't have the time to sit down and learn a vast repertoire of music for their next voyage. Sorry to say, but there's no sea shanty degree program at Juilliard. Rather, the men aboard these ships would learn the songs by rote, a method of learning based on memorization by repetition. If you learn something by rote, it's expected you'll learn it by hearing it over and over again rather than reading it in a book or writing it down to remember. Once again, this is great for workers who have their hands full all day and don't have time to crack open their shanty choir book. Instead, it's all up to the choir director, or in this case, the shanty man. The sailor specifically assigned the role of leading the songs. Although the shantymen often performed other tasks on the ships, this was a highly respected position and they were expected to be clever, witty, and quick on their feet. Another aspect of sea shanties that makes them so addicting is a little bit hard to explain, so I'm just going to say it the way that I always say it. Good mouthfeel. I know, I know, weird, but, but hear me out. Sea shanties aren't art songs. Their primary purpose was to keep the sailors unified and on task. The lyrics needed to fit the pace of the work being done, so sometimes the verses didn't always fit together thematically, going so far as to even sometimes be classified as pure nonsense. But free from the restrictions of telling a story or stringing together a ballad, sailors could improvise with whatever words came to mind. Especially when you lean into the dialects of many of these shanties, you may find that you don't always know what you're singing, but gosh darn it, sure does feel good when you sing it. That's good mouthfeel, and as odd as it may seem, it kept sailors entertained during long hours of repetitive labor. Now, it may shock you to discover that sea shanties have actually been quite popular for more than the last, oh, three weeks. <laughs> In fact, the fascinating history of sea songs, maritime industry, and even piracy have influenced culture for hundreds of years. After a stormy, terrifying sea crossing from Latvia to England in 1839, Wagner was inspired to compose The Flying Dutchman, a German language opera. Does that title sound familiar? It might if you're a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean. The general concept is much the same between the two. 
The Dutchman is cursed to captain his ghostly vessel, and every seven years he is allowed to go ashore to find the love of a faithful woman. The entire opera is a brilliant ode to the sea, with Wagner building suspense throughout this relentless story with wavy, stormy orchestration. Warning to those who get motion sick! If I piqued your interest by mentioning Pirates of the Caribbean, you are going to love Pirates of Penzance, a classic and widely performed comic opera by Gilbert and Sullivan. Take a look at this clip from Oh Better Far to Live and Die, sung by the Pirate King and his trusty chorus of pirates. Does he look familiar? At first glance, you might think you're looking right at Captain Jack Sparrow. Notice how this piece utilizes the call and response effect to create that authentic sea shanty vibe, even though we know we're watching an opera. The hilarious and lovable characters will make you fall in love with the sea in an entirely different way from Wagner. Also, it is worth the price of admission to catch a live performance of I am the very model of a modern major general. Maybe you're not a big fan of Pirates of the Caribbean. That's fine. Maybe you're more of a classic literature buff. Herman Melville, writer of the 1851 novel Moby Dick, has played a huge role in the historical preservation of sea shanties. Because of his sailing experience, he was able to record many of these songs in his literature. Melville recognized how important these shantymen were to life aboard a ship, and once wrote, It is a great thing in a sailor to know how to sing well, for he gets a great name by it from the officers, and a good deal of popularity among his shipmates. Some sea captains, before shipping a man, always ask him whether he can sing out at a rope. Fast forward to the 21st century, and life has come full circle for the author of Moby Dick. This masterwork was adapted for the operatic stage in 2010 by Jake Heggie and Gene Shear. Shear estimates that about 50% of the libretto is word-for-word -word Melville, so if you love Moby Dick, you will love this opera. I have to admit, Shanty Talk has taken me down a rabbit hole that has surprised and impressed me. While this viral trend may fade in time, I think sea shanties are still here to stay and will continue sneaking their way into pop culture in one way or another. Let us know your favorite sea shanty in the comments. Or, even better, record yourself singing it for hashtag shanty talk and be sure to tag Kenosha Opera Festival when you do. If that's not your cup of grog, no worries. You can just like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with your friends. We release new scorekeeping episodes at the beginning of every month with additional awesome content released throughout the month, so definitely hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have an awesome and operatic day.